welcome to Season 4, Episode 2 of Pro Wrestling's Top 50. I'm your host, Travis McNeil, and today we continue our countdown of the Top 50 matches in Lucha Underground history with match number 49 on our list, which is the Cueto Cup first round match between Mascarita Sagrada and Pindar from the June 21st, 2017 edition of Lucha Underground titled Family First. Um, this match is one of my little hidden gem matches uh, that I'll, I'll say comes up on this list. Uh, it runs just under six minutes. Um, it might not blow you away with how developed it is or anything like that, uh, but it is super, super, super fun um, and a great representation of the fun that Lucha Underground brought to our television sets during its run. Um, a little bit of background on this one, we won't get into nearly as much background as we did on yesterday's video, uh, but the Cueto Cup was great. So the Cueto Cup was a device used in Season 3 of Lucha Underground. It took up about a quarter of the season, so Season 3 was quite long. I had a, a mid-season break in between that extended it even longer, uh, but the Cueto Cup run, ran 10 weeks, and it was simply just a 32-person tournament to determine the number one contender for the Lucha Underground Championship, with the winner of the tournament getting that shot at Ultima Lucha, uh, Ultima Lucha Trez, rather, um, you know, the most important show that season of Lucha Underground. We talked about Ultima Lucha yesterday. Um, tournaments are the easiest thing in the world to do in wrestling, in my opinion. Um, they make wrestling seem more competitive, um, and it's always an effective way to do some matches that, you know, your fan base might want to see. Um, that you don't really have to put the storyline spin on because it, there's a logical, you know, reason for it to happen, uh, you know, through it, it occurring in a tournament. It also makes the matches on your show seem consequential. This is something that, you know, I feel like WWE's really dropped the ball, you know, in, in the past 20 years, you know, with kind of, you know, having the, the king of the ring sparingly. Um, it was something that Impact or TNA did a great job with, you know, years ago with Bound for Glory series. And Lucha Underground did a great job with it here. You know, New Japan does the G1 as well. It's just, it gives matches a purpose. Um, and, you know, rather than them just being throwaway or having to be part of, an, of a feud or an established storyline. Um, so, Cueto Cup, uh, we'll talk about it more throughout this, uh, this season of the show. Um, but it was very successful and I, I really enjoyed it at the time. This was a first round match between... Two guys kind of thrown together. So Masquerita Sagrada, you know, famous luchador mini wrestler. Um, he was used periodically, you know, showed up and made random appearances in Lucha Underground. Uh, he eventually, um, you know, kind of had a feud with Famous B, who was a heel manager. They kind of did some comedy matches, you know, leading to like a fans bring the weapons match between them, which is kind of weird. Um, and ultimately, he would end up involved in a storyline in Season 4 with the Rabbit Tribe. Uh, the Rabbit Tribe was comprised of Paul London, who is brilliant. Um, Seltador, who was uh, a wrestler that was repackaged many times throughout Lucha Underground. He was El Mariachi Loco, Sinestro de la Muerte, um, in The Disciples of Death, and eventually Seltador. Um, Mal Suerte, who was Lil Cholo, um, who was Mr. Cisco in Lucha Underground initially as part of the crew and was repackaged. So that's kind of the nice thing about Lucha Underground, is they had all of these SoCal locals that, you know, they'd put, you know, under a hood as one character, they would kill that character off, you know, we talked about Lucha Underground not being afraid to kill characters, um, and eventually just bring them back under a different mask as a new character, so it was very, very smart. Um, so, Masquerade Sagrada would end up, you know, being the, the rabbit that the rabbit tribe was, you know, trying to chase after, um, a lot of weird video packages, very like Alice in Wonderland-esque I'll be honest, it really didn't do a lot for me. I, I found it, you know, confusing and, and weird. And I've never done acid or anything like that. So, you know, it really, it really didn't work for me. Uh, but ultimately, you know, they would track down Masquerita Sagrada. He would turn heel as part of the group and be El Bunny and wear a black outfit. Uh, the Rabbit Tribe was led by the White Rabbit, which was uh, Killer Cross, Carrion Cross, you know, in NXT and, and now the WWE main roster. Um, as like a scary like kind of cult leader who would use like a mandible claw, but they would always have like blood capsules when he would use the mandible claw and wrestlers would spit up blood and stuff. It was all really weird and it was like dark. Um, and, and like I said, that ran, you know, through season three and, and ultimately, uh, you know, a lot more in season four. Um, Pindar is uh, a, 
uh, luchador known as Steve Payne, um, you know, who's been around in Mexico for forever, used to be part of a uh, AAA, um, started turning up around this time in uh, Cleveland for Absolute Intense Wrestling, AIW. Uh, he was doing a lot of really good stuff there. He was teaming with Gringo Loco, his Crazy Pain. Uh, they had a bunch of just insane Lucha Libre-esque matches at the time. Um, so Steve Payne was starting to get a bit of hype. I uh, was brought into Lucha Underground. Um, ultimately, didn't really work out with him. They had him as the mass Pindar. Uh, he would later be repackaged as Big Bad Steve. Um, and Steve Payne's kind of just fallen off the radar. You know, there's attitude issues and, and things like that with him. Um, but he was part of the Reptile Tribe. So we talked about the Reptile Tribe a little bit yesterday. Uh, it was led by Cobra Moon, who you would now um, know as Thunder Rosa in uh, AEW or NWA or, you know, whatever promotions that you watch. Um, so she was like this weird serpent snake lady with like supernatural powers as everybody in Lucha Underground seems to have. Um, she built this stable of Pindar, um, Vibra, who was um, Luchasaurus. Uh, they ended up repackaging him as Luchasaurus when all was said and done, but uh, initially uh, Vibra. So this is where, you know, he got his real start. Uh, Judas Straven, you know, coming off of, of Tough Enough and, and, you know, eventually kind of rose to prominence with this character in Lucha Underground. Um, Daga, who, you know, was kind of like her boy toy that she brought into her reptile tribe. Um, Drago, who we talked about yesterday that she ultimately, you know, um, shackled and convinced to join the tribe. Um, and, and much later on, uh, Jeremiah Crane, Sammy Callahan, uh, who she would bring back from the dead after he lost a Grave Consequences match. More on that later. Um, as, and repackaged him as Jeremiah Snake right near the, the tail end of season four. Um, so the Reptile Tribe, they were uh, a cast of characters, again, season three, season four, you know, very prevalent in the Lucha Underground, underground realm. Uh, this match, though, despite, you know, all of these stables and these characters and this wackiness that I just went through, um, basically, Steve Payne decides to work this match, um, not as a weird, you know, dinosaur, reptile, you know, whatever he is character. He just works it as a Rudo. Um, he jaws with the referee, he taunts the crowd, he like stomps Masquerita and, you know, smacks him on the butt and, and things like that. It's just, it, it's a little weird, kind of uncomfortable, um, but, you know, very, very Lucha Libre-esque if you're a, a Lucha traditionalist. You know, you see this stuff in Mexico all the time, um, and it almost worked for the best in this match, is they just bust out six minutes of just insane spots. Um, it's all very captivating. It's got this great little underdog story, story to it, you know, with Masquerita obviously being undersized. Um, he tries to fight at the start. He eats just a wild big boot from Pindar um, and just gets thrown around. I call it like pizza tossing. Basically, Steve Page just like throws him up in the air and he spins around like a pizza and kind of face plants on the mat. He does that a couple times. Um, but eventually he starts to, to rack up this offense. You know, he ducks the big boot that cut him off at the start of the match. Uh, he hits a short Rana while Pindar is on his knees. Um, he gets popped up, you know, like pop-up powerbomb style and catches Pindar in an arm drag. Um, and he busts out a move that, to my knowledge, I think I've only seen it this one time. And I remember, um, you know, years ago it being a move that I thought in my head that I always wanted to see. So um, I, I call it the homicide dive, right? The Tope Con Hilo, you know, through the middle rope like a suicide dive, but with the somersault. Um, so Masquerade actually does this and lands it into a Hurricane Rana on Pindar. It was amazing. They pulled it off tremendously well. Uh, I was blown away because I'd always wanted to see this move. And like I said, I don't think I've ever seen it again since. Um, the spots just keep on coming. Uh, when we're back in the ring, um, Pindar again is on his knees. Um, Masquerade again comes in for the short Rana, but he gets, you know, popped up once again and just hit with an Ace Crusher. So the old, like, you know, Bubba Ray Dudley, Bubba Cutter, the toss-up Ace Crusher, but he does it from his knees, which is wild. And again, you know, the, the strength of Steve Payne and, you know, the, the small stature of Masquerade allowed them to pull this off perfectly. Um, there's a, a spot where, you know, Cobra Moon starts to interfere and, you know, she chokes and slaps and stomps Masquerita. Um, he ends up getting, you know, come up and saw on her with a slap and actually uses her hand to walk up the ropes in an escalera and hit a crazy Hurricane Rana from the top rope to the floor on Pindar. That was amazing. They do a deja vu head scissor spot where, um, you know, Pindar spins Masquerade around for five or six whole rotations on it, 
which was wild. Um, Masquerita busted a moonsault for a great near fall for a two count. And then we end up getting an amazing finish where, you know, finally Pindar puts a rest to Masquerita, lays him out with a super kick, you know, very similar to the start of the match. And then finishes him off with the old SAT move, the, uh, the Skeleton Driver, which if you're unfamiliar with that, basically imagine that you have somebody in powerbomb position, uh, you grab both hands between the guy's legs, so basically like a double pump handle, and you pull him up and flip him and land it out into an X Factor. So it is a crazy move. I don't know if you know those words did it justice, uh, but it's something that to the best of my knowledge, the SAT, Jose and Joel Maximo, you know, invented in the early 2000s when they were doing just the craziest moves on earth. And here Steve Payne brings it back. Uh, you, you might know this move a little bit, um, James Newblood, who is a name that a lot of you might not know, uh, but there was, you know, like a viral Twitter clip years ago. He did this move in a match in CZW against Javier in like 2003 in his one appearance there. Um, but he did it, and instead of coming out in an X Factor, they did an extra rotation, and he landed in a power bomb. Uh, you know, a lot of us refer to that move just as the New Blood because he was the only guy that ever did it. Um, see if you can find that gif on Twitter because it's insane. Uh, but this match is so much fun. It's six minutes. It's an enjoyable ride between two, you know, characters. A great, you know, simple, basic face heel structure. Some of the craziest spots you will see in a match this compact. And it is well worth your time and well worth the watch. And it's everything I love about Lucha Underground. It is a super fun, out-of-nowhere match and a great little hidden gem that I was happy to include on this list. Um, as we've mentioned, Lucha Underground, you can track it down online. It's been on different streaming services through the years. Uh, just Google search it, find out where you can watch it. Um, well worth your time. You can subscribe to my channel here on YouTube, of course, so that you never miss a video. Follow me on Instagram and Twitter at Wrestling50. And please join me again tomorrow as we continue to count down Pro Wrestling's Top 50. Top 50.